the Boone shot. Yeah, yeah. Oh four playoffs. That How was you know? I just when I watched that game and I saw that for the first time, I've never had a feeling of joy that high in my life. I cried. Yeah, I might have I too. I cried. I cried. I cried watching that. Which, you know, I'm not afraid to admit that. In the beginning, there was baseball. It is Tuesday, March 31st, and I am CJ. You can find me on Twitter at CJ in pinstripes, and I'd like to let everyone know that I fondle my ball sack. Evan, how are you doing today? I was better before you said that, but uh, let's just jump right into it. This is 27 Down, perfect podcast for the perfect game. How are you guys doing today? Who is you guys? Am I you guys? Oh, you were saying you're talking to You and I guess Joe, the people watching i don't know (laughs) (laughs) what a great start hey so we've got actually some baseball to talk today which we've are you wearing a what is that hat jackson hole wyoming okay for a a second for a second it looked like it could have been a buffalo bills hat oh fuck no and i was gonna have to wipe my feet and balls with it yeah you know i'm a jets fan yeah that's that's exactly why i was going to wipe my feet and balls with it so yeah. uh we we do have some baseball to talk today uh, i mean um, there hasn't been any news so we're just gonna we're just gonna keep talking um i just had an idea we should have an nfl draft show like not today but we should have one considering it's coming up soon yeah we could do that on thursday why not yeah we can maybe we can talk, talk about it with the guest that we might have on which is a good transition each thursday we're gonna like to bring on uh, someone from the Grunt Talk staff just to introduce them. So for the next couple of weeks, we're going to do that. That's right. Yeah, we are working in conjunction. We are part of the Grunt Talks network now. Um, And uh, we would like to give a shout out to all those guys. Evan, you might be better at giving their Twitter handles. I don't know if you want to do that now or later Uh, on. I don't know all the Twitter handles, but it's Sam (laughs) V, Kate, Michael, Justin, Darren, you, me, Chris Vitale. Mike Scudaro, who does Yapping Yankees. You can follow that podcast as well. Uh, we show it on the website. So shout yeah, out so, to the whole team. So when we, uh, when we eventually post this to Twitter, just give it a, a look. Um, I'll try my best to tag everyone on there. So good. they're great follows. If you're going to follow us, or if you already follow us, you should follow them as well. Yeah, um, they're great. So yeah, we're going we're gonna to be talking a lot of older stuff until we get some news. Um, for the time being, I was just thinking to myself, like, what is something that we can get excited about when it comes to old baseball? And what is more exciting than the long ball? What is more exciting than someone just fisting the pitcher and depositing that ball on the other side of that wall? What are some times, and we're going we're gonna to open this up to the Yankees first, because yes, we are Yankee fans. We have We have more knowledge about the Yankees, even though we are a baseball podcast. First and foremost, uh, the Yankees is what we know most. Uh, So we're going to open this up first. Our three favorite Yankee home runs. Evan, what are some moments that you have just absolutely masturbated to thinking about some of these home runs? (laughs) Well, one of the greatest days in my young Yankee youth was when we signed Jason Giambi. I lost my mind. I was up at boarding school. And we had the the paper at breakfast and everyone was freaking out in the dining hall. So I will have to go with the Giambi home run. Graham, sorry, I'm sorry. So for those listening, if you're not a big Yankee fan, you might not exactly know which home run he's referring to, but it's that, that, so just to, just to paint the picture, because I was debating putting this one on my list. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's number four for me at worst. Uh, Jason Giambi, so the Yankees played this game against the Twins. It goes into extra innings. It was, what, the 12th inning? Something like that, yeah. It yeah. was deep. It's like the 12th or the 13th inning. The Twins take the lead in the top of the inning. They score three runs. It's pouring. But the umps need to give the Yankees their, their last legs. So who comes up with the bases loaded but Jason Giambi wipes out those three runs and puts in a fourth, baby. Yankees Ugh. win. 
That was good. That was a really good one because if I remember correctly, Giambi hadn't really had a lot of success that year up to that point. And no, he, he had a slow for, start. Yeah, people were waiting until like, hey, where's Jason Giambi that we just signed? Yeah. So. Um, one of my favorite things about him that I always thought was insane is when he could – swing from his ankles and still hit the ball out do you remember that the guy was a special hitter the guy was yeah. a special hitter and I'm, I'm gonna be completely honest with you I at, towards the end of his Yankee tenure he was really underappreciated yeah. Jason Giambi up until honestly even until the last year that he was on the Yankees I thought the dude was I thought the dude was great He's really fun, too. I just – I like everything about him. I've always liked him, and I liked his days in Colorado, too. And, I thought that was pretty cool. And he had easily – I mean, we talk about players that grow the porn stash. <laughs> he had the greatest mustache in the history of sports. You're pretty not going to tell me otherwise because it was unreal. But just really quickly, just to go over some of his stats in that 2008 season, the guy still hit 32 home runs. The guy, yep. the guy uh, still had an on-base percentage of 373. I mean, the guy could not field a baseball to save his ass, and that kind of hurt his, his value. Yep. Metrics that kind of I think that's sport. also why people overvalue Teixeira when compared to, you know, Giambi. Yeah. Because his glove was so good, so you got to give him props for that. But I don't know. For his some reason, really I like good. Giambi better. His glove was really good. But a first baseman, you know, the way positional adjustments work, first base isn't a very defensive, valuable position. You could be, you could be the greatest defensive first baseman of all time, and it still wouldn't really budge your war numbers all that much right we've talked about that before um by the way just use a little statistic that i brought up last week his iso 255 really really fucking good nope. the guy the guy had a lot of power even still even in his last uh few years with the yankees i uh, completely extremely underappreciated i think all right what else what else you got the matsui grand slam another great one Another great one. Yeah. I, I remember also when we signed him and I used to go to this deli all the time and, and Mike was the owner of the deli and I bought a, a Matsui jersey like the second we signed him and I wore it into the deli and he was mocking me because he's like, this guy's going to be out of the league in like two years. He lasted <laughs> with us for seven years and won the MVP in the World Series in 09. I love that Matsui was, so much. That was incredible. Opening day. 2003. I mean, that's the opposite of what Giambi did, if you think about it. Giambi <laughs> took forever to have that moment. Matsu yep. was like, hey, I'm here. Yep. So that Such was Such cool. a fun player. Uh, we all know what number one is going to be for both of us. So what's your number one? The boon shot. Yeah, yeah. 04 playoffs. That was, not. I just, when I watched that game and I saw that for the first time, I've never had a feeling of joy that high in my life. I cried. Yeah, I might have too. I cried. I cried. I cried watching that, which, you know, I'm not afraid to admit that, that sports can move me to tears. Speaking of which, the other time that I cried was when Derek Jeter got that hit uh, in his final game at Yankee Stadium. A little tear. Yep. Just a little, not a boo-hoo, but like a little, that's right. I that's was like pretty that. crazy when he hit uh, the 3,000th uh, 3, hit or whatever on the home run. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the, the big fan – dove on the ball and, and was cool about it that it's just a great story yeah I thought it was kind of dumb that he just gave the ball back but hey what well you gonna do? you're a son of a bitch so you would have been like nope I want a condo and a boat and a I wouldn't have said any of that all I would have said is give me some damn season tickets that's it that's all I want Mr. Jeter you can afford <laughs> that with the money that you accidentally drop leaving your apartment like come on and, and you probably would be cool with season tickets in the bleachers right yeah, yeah, I wouldn't give a fuck. Yeah, I I'd take that. That'd be a cool deal. Yeah. Um, okay, so now my three favorite Yankee home runs. Um, so you already know number one is the boon shot. I'm not even going to bother getting to number one. But yeah. my number three is the Tino Grand Slam in the 98 World Series. Ooh. Love that one because when the ball goes over the wall, you just see that poof, explosion of beer fly out. Like, yep. you don't see what actually happened, though. 
So that's the funny part. <laughs> like, did, I want to know, did someone get so excited that they threw their stuff? Or like, did someone get hit with the ball? <laughs> I want to know what the hell happened that made that beer go flying. But like, that was uh. just, you know, of course the Yankees were going to dominate the Padres. And here it is. Tino Martinez, right up your gravy pipe. Uh, and number two, uh, the Derek Jeter walk-off in 2001 World Series. So, so uh, how do you not love that? Uh, if you don't love that, uh, you probably love uh, licking toenails. Um, uh, how also, about- back, back to the Boone shot, the crazy thing about that one is about four months later, he tore his ACL playing basketball pickup, even though his contract said not to do that. And then we got a rock. Right. Yeah, he's voided his contract, and that was the <laughs> thing that allowed them to get A-Rod. And now he's our manager, and he's changed a lot of opinions uh, over these past, you know, two years. I think he's gotten better. I didn't like him the first year, but now I think he's, he's a little better. Yeah, he was clearly inexperienced his first year. I still think he did an okay job. Once we got to the playoffs, I wanted to murder him. I'm not going to lie. I thought he made some really fucking dumb decisions. But, I yeah, he, he – man, he improved. I mean, he didn't – I think this last postseason was so different because, yeah, he was bringing in guys who were struggling, but what choice did he have? Everyone was equally out of energy. I mean, Ottavino had to only pitch to one guy. He couldn't pitch to more than one guy because yeah. he, had, he had pitched nine trillion innings that season. And that was the case for both sides. If you remember the the Houston series, it, it looked like both sides were just pretty exhausted for the first couple of games, and then Houston just took over at the end. But yeah, it, it what yeah we definitely overworked our bullpen a bit. Uh, okay, so what about your favorite non-Yankee home run? Were you able to think of one? I didn't think of okay. one. Well, I have one. And okay, let's it's, hear it. It's one that I go back to YouTube to watch once in a while. Because it's so beautiful when Albert Pujols just breaks Brad Lidge in half over his knee. He picks him up like he's a baseball and just crushes him with his knee. I just love the fact. So the Astros were up two to one. And there's two. I believe there's a runner on base. I don't think there's two. I think there was only one runner on. Lidge, by the way, who was absolutely dominant, that slider was unbelievable. Yeah. Lidge so, was pretty damn good. Pujols and the crowd's cheering. Everyone's going wild. You hear this thing come off Pujols' bat like it's a gunshot. And all of that crowd noise, ah, just mm-hmm. gone. And then the ball, I mean, it, it would have gone 600 feet if it didn't bounce off that big reinforced glass that they had right. on, on the train. That thing is still flying. I cannot believe a human hit a baseball that hard. That was unbelievable. And it's hilarious because that was the last time Brad Lidge was ever dominant. It's yeah. like Pujol psychologically went in his pants and figuratively grabbed his wiener and not at all literally started whacking him off. Let me Dude, tell you. you talk about balls and wieners more than anyone I know. Um, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true because we both know, we both know Mike. That, so. that, yeah, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> it's definitely Mike. I'm sorry. It's definitely <laughs> Noonies. <laughs> uh, Noonies, I know he told me, by the way, when we were in Cancun, and, or maybe, maybe it was, maybe it was the week before that I had spoken to him. He told me, I don't know if he's told you this. He listens to our show. The dude does not watch sports. That's a fan right there. The yeah, he does. Watch. Does not watch baseball, doesn't understand baseball at all, but he listens to our show. And I got to say, Mr. Mike Noonan, you talk about balls a lot, but it's okay. So do I. And we appreciate it. (laughs) Mike Noonan only knows about Rush. (laughs) Hey, I don't blame him because that's pretty incredible. He knows Sirith Ungol, too. Okay. Anyways. um, (laughs) Okay, great. So that was fun. Um, How about this, everyone? Uh, get out your notebooks, get out your pens and pencils. Oh, God uh, damn it. You're teaching again. I'm going to just take Don't make a nap. me give you detention. Don't make me give you detention. Mr. <sighs> so, uh, welcome back class in session, professor CJ. Um, 
we are here to discuss um, a little statistic. It's going to be a lot easier to wrap your minds around than the last one. Uh, this is called left on base percentage. I think you can even understand left on base percentage, Evan. Even someone who is as, <laughs> well, I don't know what the correct word for it is. Dumb. I know stats, you, you jerk. Um, I, I, LOB percentage is something that everyone can wrap their minds around. So it all has to do with luck, ladies and gentlemen, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's the percentage of players that get on base. It's a pitching statistic, a percentage of players that get on base and get stranded there. So when a pitcher allows a player on base and ends the inning without letting them score, that contributes to their LOB percentage. So um, what does this mean? So what this means is pitchers – will tend to average out at around 70 to 72 percent. So if a pitcher has a very high left on base percentage, it means they're getting lucky. And you can expect more of those runners to start scoring. If a pitcher has a very low left on base percentage, it means that the pitcher is unlucky and you can actually expect fewer runs to start coming home. So let's say you have a pitcher who has an ERA up near four and you notice that they're that their left on base percentage is about 60%. So that means you can expect their ERA to drop because they're going to start leaving more runners on base. Pitchers just tend to always go back to 70%. So if a pitcher's under 70, expect their ERA to drop. If a pitcher's over 70, expect their ERA to rise. Any questions? You had some questions last time. Come on. I know you have to have questions. I really don't. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> because it's easy to understand. Great. I'm a I'm an awesome teacher. I mean, it, no, it was easier than the last that last thing to understand, though I did learn a little bit last time. There you go. There you go. For sure. A lot of a lot of sabermetrics has to do with like what can players control. And a lot of times pitchers can't really control how many players they end up leaving on base. Right. So it's always just gonna end up going back to average. Right. Want to talk movies? Uh, let's bring Joe back for a second. Actually. Oh, there, Joe, you wanna, you're there. Yeah, sure. Joe, I'm in. Joe, I'm in. I'm here. I Whoa. just wanted to let you know the Mets still suck. Oh, That's all. Geez. You can go now. Oh, wait, 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 wait. no! Hold on. <laughs> Don't go yet. Second. Don't go yet. Don't go yet. You have to tell everyone about your favorite home run. Oh, yeah, it's the it. best home run ever. Uh, all right. Well, first of all, my real, the, my real favorite home runs were the seven that Murph hit in the playoffs in 20. <laughs> and and those now, are and all, now, I love and all, all of the ones that are hitting for the Well, that was, that was a tough <laughs> couple of years. But, uh, <laughs> watch him hit 350 every year because we didn't want to give him the extra 2 million. Mets. <laughs> give him 14 instead of 12 and, and he batted 350 and hit 30 for you and not the Nationals who are in your division. But anyway. Um, so Cespedes, right? I, I forget. I don't, can't even remember if it was last year or the year before because we haven't seen the guy since 2015. But <laughs> I love that guy. I love that guy. Even though I think I saw him driving one of his really nice cars around Terrytown a couple years ago with the top off, like when he was on the DL, just like cruising. But I, <laughs> not facts. Anyway, he comes back from the DL 2018-ish and comes out hits a bomb. Well, not a bomb, but like basically wills it over the left field wall, limps around third, comes in, and then we get the report from Gary Cohen that he's going back on the DL. <laughs> like came back from a year on the DL, hits bomb, is like, yup, I'm back. And then he's like, but he's like, I'm not going to be back for a while. <laughs> Supposedly he's coming back this year, so if he does... And yeah, no. I, heard, MVP? I heard that about Jacoby Ellsbury at some point. No, no, no. MVP. Cespedes is different, man. Cespedes, you you want this guy on your team right now. I'm telling you. Sure. No, I don't even <laughs> want him on my fantasy <laughs> team. Nothing. You, Cespedes. I'm team Cespedes. I the want guy hasn't played in seven no, years. No, no, no. I want him to go. I am, you think he's going to be a difference maker. Forget the media. Forget the haters. He's got me. <laughs> That's a, that's all that matters. Yes. Well, <laughs> no one really has anything right now. So I feel like it's a good time to make claims like that. Like, yeah. We're all working. There, I mean, nothing. there's nothing going on. We've got nothing. Nothing. Right. Bye, guys. See Later, you. Joe.
we've got such nothing that we're going to talk movies again. That that was that was great. Okay, sure. Let's do movies. All right. So this time we decided to just, you know, forget about genre. Let's just come up with our five worst movies of all time. Um, I think I'm going to go first this time. If that's cool. Do it. All right. So I'm going to start for number five. Uh, the fifth worst movie I've ever seen. Well, there was actually a wonderful movie from the 70s called uh, The Wicker Man. Good movie. Actually, legitimately a great movie. Yep. 2006 with Nick Cage. And for the love of God, it's so awful. Now, you're going to notice a theme here. I'm you hate Nick sure. Cage. I'm, no, well, no, no, no. It's not actually Nick Cage that's the theme. I think the theme is every single movie on this list is so bad that they're hilarious. <laughs> so this is one of those movies. I actually recommend that everyone listening watches that Wicker Man remake, but go into it expecting a comedy because it's so <laughs> unintentional. It's so unintentionally hilarious. He like punches a nun in the face while he's dressed as a bear at one point and like steals a little kid's bike or like it's just it's wild. It's absolutely classic. Uh number four is the happening. Now, for those of you who haven't heard of The Happening, it is uh, directed by M. Night Shyamalama Ding Dong, uh, so you know you're in for a ride. Uh, it's starring Zoe Deschanel and, like, John Leguizamo. It's a hot mess. Uh, I'm sorry, everyone. I'm going to spoil the movie for you, but it's, I promise it will not take away from your enjoyment. Uh, you find out the twist about a third of the way into the movie, so mm -hmm. everyone's dying. Everyone's, like, killing themselves. They're turning into, like, living zombies, and they're just committing suicide. And what's doing it? It's the trees. That's right. The trees and all of nature have decided to fight back against man. So they're releasing stuff into the air that hypnotizes people into killing themselves. I swear to God this is the plot of the movie. So no, it is. It I is. recommend that everyone goes and watches that one. Now, no, number it, three. Oh, no, go ahead. No, I was going to comment go ahead. about it. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, it's funny, with M. Night Shyamalan, he either has a masterpiece or the biggest pile of shit you can possibly, because so, Lady in the Water was also terrible. Yeah, so I'm going to say this. I, I think he only has one masterpiece. I think that The Shining is, is mm. not The Shining, um, sorry, um, Sixth Sense is his only masterpiece. Now, I will say, I thought Unbreakable was a cool movie. Uh, but I really liked Signs, dude. I hated Signs. Could not stand it. And I, I'll tell you why. I couldn't stand Signs. Boo mostly you. because the movie makes no fucking sense. Why can't these aliens who have mastered intergalactic travel just fucking level this house? Why can't they figure out a locked door? Why does water kill them? Why would you go to a planet where it's 70% the thing that kills you. Hey, you want to go to a planet that's 70% lava? Would you like to do that? Why do humans lick subway poles to do the coronavirus challenge? Well, I'll tell you what, it's not humans that have mastered intergalactic travel and figured out how to get to other planets. Like, you don't see NASA out there licking toilet seats. Good point. Next right. movie. Next movie. Now, this, I will say, is probably the one I would not recommend everyone watching. <laughs> um, last week, uh, my top three action movies starred Arnold. Well, unfortunately, the third worst movie of all time, at least from the ones I've seen. No, don't do it. Robin. Say That's it again? Robin. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As Mr. Oh, Freeze? I, I was going to say. No, I, I don't know. I just didn't hear you because it cut out. Oh, okay. Uh, well, yeah. So, Batman and Robin is just the gayest movie and i'm sorry if that's not okay to say 20 sucks and 20 i don't give a shit but it is just these two dudes first of all what's george clooney doing playing batman i mean that's my first question you went from val Kil oh you went from clooney to val kilmer like those two were both terrible right right well yeah <laughs> i know that was another big problem well actually was it was that clooney or was was val kilmer the one from batman and robin I can't even remember. They're just all so terrible. It might have been Val Kilmer. I'm going to actually look that up real quick. Batman Do it. And, and It might have been Val Kilmer, now that I think about it. Batman and Robin, the film starring... Come on, where is it? Oh, here it is. Uh, 
Nope, that was Clooney. That was the oh, one. Okay. Um, yeah. So, and then you got Arnold, and God bless you, Arnold. You didn't deserve this movie. Arnold Schwarzenegger did not deserve this movie. To have to go out there and in the most monotonous voice ever, he has to now spit these corny freeze puns telling people to chill out. Uh, I'm going to say this is not the one. Oh, I feel bad for Uma Thurman, too. I feel bad for everyone involved in that movie, Uh, except for except for George Clooney, because he sucks. But, um, yeah, I would recommend don't watch this one. No, dude, the, the scene when they're playing ice hockey with the diamond. Uh, stop. <laughs> that is the cheesiest, dumbest scene in movie history. And I was just, even as a child, I was like, what is going on right now? Yeah, this one is not so bad that it's good. I'm just going to yeah. say that. Just don't watch this one. Yeah, uh, number two. Number two, uh, Birdemic. Number two is Birdemic. If you haven't heard of Birdemic, I do recommend that you watch this one. It's all about how, like, birds are a plague and they're trying to kill Damn. people. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll check it out. I have to watch. I, I'm going to I'm yeah. honest about this one. I haven't seen I haven't seen it in, like, one continuous watch. That's I've fine. Seen, like, I've seen, like, parts of it, and that's enough for me to know, wow, this is one of the worst movies ever. Um Worst movie ever, in my opinion. Again, this is just movies I've seen. <laughs> so, The Room starring and directed by uh, Tommy Wiseau. No, that's one of the greatest movies ever made. You're, you're an idiot. <laughs> it's, one of the, it's one of the greatest movies ever in that you can't look away. It's oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> so, <laughs> so God. Hey, at, one point, at one point, Mark tells a story about a woman who's sleeping around with 10 different guys. So they beat the shit out of her. And what's Johnny's reaction? Laughter. Ha ha ha, what a story, Mark. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievably bad. Like no, the, thing- and the scene with the mother talking to the, the girl and she's like, I, it's definitely cancer. And then they yeah. never talked about it again. <laughs> they ever. never bring it up. Uh, look, this is one of those movies where I don't want to quote it too much, but... Because it's just going to take away from what the movie is. Please watch this movie. It's so terrible. Uh, here's, how ba- here's how bad it is. It's so bad that the director now tries to claim that it was intentional. He tries to claim that this is some kind of deadpan comedy movie. And it wasn't. It was a dead serious movie. It was supposed to be a heavy drama. <laughs> right, right. Why is it called The Room? Makes no sense. Why does the title of the... You'll find out when you watch this, folks. There's nothing about a room. There's no, like, oh, this is the room. That's not... It's nothing. It's none of that. Literally none of the movie makes it. Why do they play football in, like, every other scene? Yeah, and... I don't know. They can't throw the damn thing. I, I they don't played know. it in their tuxedos in a parking lot during a wedding. Okay, so I'm going to be completely honest with you. When my brother got married part of the photos that we took was us playing football in our tuxedos that's that's, fine that was cool like that's like oh okay that's funny they're playing football but these guys were just like hey game of football yeah okay (laughs) all right what do you got what's your what's your five worst well number five is a movie that i actually love but you gotta recognize it's horrible battlefield earth yeah it's a really bad movie yeah it's so good though (laughs) John Travolta <laughs> deserves an Oscar for that movie. He was a classic. Goddamn Scientologist. Um, obviously, I got to put Adam Sandler on this list. Yeah. Um, Jack and Jill. Okay, yeah, that's really bad. That's, 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 that's a good four. one, too. That might be his worst movie. I would probably agree with that. Yeah, his other bad one is... Um, Grown what's Ups. That? that one's pretty bad, but the one on Netflix. Oh, he has a ton of them. I don't know. Ridiculous Six. Yeah, that don't. Oh my god, that was horrible. Yeah. Uh, number three, Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> I can honestly say I've never seen it. <laughs> Me neither, but that's on my list. <laughs> <laughs> just based on how, just on what it's about. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, number two, Daredevil. Oh yeah, that's awful. Ugh. And number one, Titanic. What a pile of crap. <laughs> it's like eight hours long. 
<laughs> Eight hours along and all the men die. No women die in that movie. They kill off all the men. He's flown in the iceberg dying and she's hold my hand. Like, no, get off the iceberg and let me on, woman. I think you meant the door or the piece of wood, whatever it was. Yeah, whatever it was. Uh, yeah, I thought they, they swam I mean, they both... to the iceberg. I don't know. I don't care. No, dumbass. They were on a piece of debris. That Which, would have by made the way, a they more both fit on. Movie. They both fit on that piece of debris. There they was could space. Have. Uh, some some honorable mentions, by the way. Uh, Catwoman. Oh, yeah. Hitman. Yeah. Um. Uh, Fantastic Four, the most recent one they came out with. Ugh. The one with yeah. Michael B. Jordan, unfortunately. Awful. Um, and. Oh, man, I, I had one other really bad one on my mind, but it's gone now. I, I don't remember what it was. Oh, well. Uh, Electra's pretty bad. Oh, oh, uh, cas- uh, not Casino Royale. The other one, Quantum of Solace. Okay. It's, Bond movie. it's the one that came right after Casino Royale. Yeah, it was a bit boring and all over the place. Yeah, it made no sense. It was like, okay, well, the government's going to monopolize like 60% of the water supply. Yeah. I'm excited for the new one, but they have postponed it because of Corona. So True. we need yeah. to wait till probably after the summer. Yeah. It's crazy that Daniel Craig is still doing it, man. This is his last one, though. He, they've yeah. confirmed it's his last one, and then they'll probably, so, you know. It'll be interesting to see who plays him next. Yeah. Who knows? I'll do it. <laughs> but it sucks because my birthday is in about 15 days as of tomorrow and that's Jackie Robinson day and it's going to be the first time in my life that I haven't been able to watch like a baseball game on Jack Robinson day and that kind of sucks so we will likely do something because I think it's on a Thursday actually so well there you go filming. so everyone on Jackie Robinson day uh, Evan wants you to drink an entire bottle of liquor uh, in honor for his birthday because he can't watch baseball. He just said it. You don't have to just don't rewind or anything. Just do it. All right. What a great show. This is 27 Down, the perfect podcast for the perfect game. Later, guys. <laughs>